Hello and welcome to Just Draw, Just Paint part 15. This week I would like to chat to you guys a little bit about um, some changes I'm seeing in the industry and how it might affect us um, and talk a little bit about ancient history, right? The stuff that's happened before and how it is influencing what we're seeing now. While I do this, I would like for you guys to um, watch me draw, right? That's what this is all about. I'm just going to draw up a character. I'm going to work it up to a sketch. And then right at the end, I will show you the great reveal of me turning it into final line art from the sketch, um, just with a little bit of a layover. So let's dive in and chat. So this week, um, you can see something a little bit different, my face, right? And that's because I haven't been, I haven't had my face on here in a while. And what I'd like to chat about is a couple of things here. Number one, we've now, I think, moved into the space where we're seeing mass adoption of AI art in all kinds of things. We're seeing news articles, clippings on the internet, like ads using it, thumbnails using it, like across the space, even you here on YouTube. Like we're seeing AI used all over the place and it's kind of become the go-to place for non-creatives to get artwork, right? We always knew that's what it was going to be, but now we're seeing it, right? We're seeing it everywhere. And what's really interesting is that we've also seen a, a lot of it in the art space because some of the platforms, ArtStation, uh, Pinterest, right, is showing us this stuff. We're starting to get used to seeing what it looks like, right? We kind of get this feeling from it that if you're a trained artist you know you can see it you just go mm, yeah it's ai you can see it's ai right and i think that mm, yeah feeling that we get when we see it is now informing us into a new direction to take art because we've just come from an age where let's take a step back we have taken art onto the internet originally when we first developed the way to draw with this thing right we started drawing even before that you know when we started drawing with pins and all that kind of good stuff we started taking our art onto the internet sharing it and forming micro communities weren't there where there weren't a lot of us right there weren't a lot of artists around and so these very small tight communities like conceptart.org comes to mind uh, we would all share our sketches we would chat we would network we would be friendly we would encourage each other it was a very different time it was a very different space because the industry was smaller there was less opportunity for us we have since migrated into a massive industry the entertainment industry is enormous it's bigger than it has ever ever been before there is more opportunity than has ever ever been before and we're starting to see a tremendous amount of derivative work. I talked about this in my uh, video a while ago about the permission economy, how we're all seeing and being influenced by those around us. But I think we're starting to hit a peak with it now where portfolios are starting to look derivative of one another, right? Like if I put one artist next to another, they could be the same person, right? And that is so weird. It's so, so weird. And if you imagine being in the shoes of an art director who's hiring artists who has a stack of portfolios to choose from and is going through work, you don't want to be looking at everything that looks the same. You want to be looking for something that looks individual, that looks exciting, that looks unique enough to spark the imagination and to make us feel something when we, we look at it, whether it's aesthetically or whether it's by pure function. You know, we're going to start to say that person has it. They have something special that we want on our project. And I think we're starting to see a movement now, thank goodness, back towards practical production art for entertainment. There was a real long chunk of time, more than 10 years, probably about 15 years, where everybody's riffing on everybody else to make very aesthetically beautiful work. And what we're seeing is AI can make beautiful work. It's undeniably flashy and polished. But what it can't do and I'm not the first artist to say this, in fact, some of my heroes have already said this, um, is that the work itself is just not meaningful. It doesn't have depth. It doesn't have problem solving. It doesn't have um, risk, right? It's not taking risks. 
And that's what we do best as creatives. We live on the edge of creativity. It's often a chaotic and mad place, but it's where we thrive and where we produce the best work. I mean, look at any famous band or artist, you know, a little bit crazy, right? We're all a little bit, you know, nutty, right? Let's put it that way. Uh, in one way or another, we're not necessarily the uh, order of society that um, is functioning according to, uh, you know, exactly staying in a cubicle, right? That would drive me crazy, right? So um, with all of that said, we've also seen recently like a move away from terms of service that are toxic. You know, we're all starting to wake up. We're all starting to speak as a community. We're starting to say, no, I don't want that. I don't want to be a part of your horrible terms of service. I don't want to be part of your horrible platform that you promised us would be a platform for us and not for your profit, right? And not for you selling out to the overlords that will control our work. So, recently, we've seen a move towards a new platform called Kara. I joined Kara back in 2024 January when I became a coffee supporter because I saw the AI movement and I saw that we needed a new platform. And what happens when things get bad, whether it's bad food, bad war times, bad whatever situation you find yourself in, you have to move. That's circumstance means, right? Finding yourself in a circle. And the only way out of that circle is to move. And when people feel underrepresented, when people feel marginalized for their efforts, they're going to make an effort to move to where they don't feel that. And Kara recently has represented that place that of refuge, right? That safe haven where we can all find one another again. Now, what Kara ends up being, I don't know yet. I think it's way too early. Um, I've spoken to the co-founder on Discord. She's a lovely woman and she works really, really hard to make it all happen. Everybody has a bitter taste in their mouth from the destructive nature of what's been going on. You know, the terms of service, the AI, the indiscriminate and illegal, horrible, horrible AI scraping that's been going on the industry um, collapsing because the economy is taking a hit and people losing their jobs and it being flooded through the news, even though we have tremendous examples and proof that the industry is growing. Like there's a lot of negativity out there is what I'm saying, right? Like a lot of it. And it's very hard, especially as an aspiring artist to be surrounded by influences and think that everything is doom and gloom and that there's nowhere to go and nowhere to hang and nowhere to share and nowhere to be vulnerable and be an artist, right? And I'm, I, the internet's not the best place, right? It's really not the best place. We can all agree on that. But the options in real life, because COVID were shut down and then the AI thing came, it was just being like slapped by a wet fish, right? And so now we're in a situation where it's like, well, I can go to conventions. Well, now we have Kara. And now we have tools to help us against scraping, like Glaze and Nightshade. Fantastic. So what does this mean? I think it means that we're moving into a new era whereby artists are going to start protecting their individuality again. And I am super excited by that because I'm not sure if you guys have seen like the front pages of ArtStation or other schools producing student work that all looks the same. It all looks like the same line art, the same rendering style. You know, whether it's ripped from that or ripped from that, it's all the same. And back in the, let's call it 90s, right, where there was a real golden age of book cover illustration and and video games and all kinds of stuff like that, where everybody was individual, right? Everybody had a style. Everybody had something to bring to the table that was them. And they got to cultivate that voice instead of feeling like they were part of a cult, right, that they had to follow the sheep, that they had to produce work that looked like that, right? That it had to look like their favorite game. We're stepping away from that again. We're starting to see the value of individuals who approach their work from a place of real heart and real uniqueness. And I am so excited because imagine, we have the numbers now, imagine what happens when we start turning the taps back on creativity and uniqueness. We're going to see some amazing, amazing stuff, right? And I think this is the time for it. So that's about it. I don't think there's too much else I'd like to talk about today other than I'm incredibly optimistic for the future of art and where we're going to take it. But in the meantime, we are going to have some challenges, right? I I suspect that uh, globally we're facing economic issues that are not going to be resolved anytime soon. I think we might move into a darker time, but I think in that darkness, we're going to continue to work, survive, and produce beauty. 
And it's going to be a special time because when we come out of it, it's going to be like another golden age. We're going to have a second run at this digital art world and it's going to be fantastic. So I hope you guys are enjoying the videos I'm producing here on YouTube. Uh, if you do, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification. It really, really helps me grow, which is my intention for this year and to share more information with you guys. I hope you've been liking the Just Draw series. It's been a lot of fun for me to produce and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.